Welcome back, Polyglow family. I'm Lenny. I'm Carmine. And we are the owners of Polyglow Products. So we are here now, video number four, and we're gonna talk a little bit more in depth about what you're gonna do to the fiberglass surface. It's game day, Lenny. Game day, baby. Game day, I set aside my Saturday, maybe the weekend. I got my boat, my RV in the, in the driveway. And you mentioned to us that I gotta prepare this thing. That's right. I gotta prepare the surface so I can bring out the shine, the color, and the protection. Correct. Talk me through it. Let's, let's talk about it. So step one, we're gonna clean and prepare the fiberglass surface. And if you remember in our previous videos, we talked about some of our products like PolyPrep and PolyOx, the weight scrub pad, and the slightly more aggressive ultra fine sanding pad, right? It's not gonna leave scratches, but it's gonna take off that heavy oxidation. And that's what you wanna do. You wanna get that white chalky layer off Get some of those colors out from underneath of that white chalky layer. You can even go right over the, the vinyl decals with the white scrub pad and the ultra fine sanding pad. But the point is to get the oxidation off, the rust stains, the black streaks, you know, any other stains that you have in there. Um, certainly if you've applied waxes and polishes of, of um, you know, other products on your fiberglass surface in the past, the poly prep will, will take that off. So you, you want to prepare the surface properly. So, so, looks, so we, want a, we want a uniformed that's right. surface. You nailed it. Uniform, so nothing on it. <clears throat> but the color should look uniform. It yes. shouldn't look blotchy. Got right? it. That's the point. You, want, a, to, you want to get it looking. What about, you, you mentioned decals. Yeah. Can I use prep and ox on decals? You absolutely can. When do I know to use which one? So you can use either of them on the decals, okay? It's not going to damage the decals like we said. But what's important about decals is this. If you're planning on applying more decals, you want to get the surface prepared, get all the oxidation off, okay? So the decals are going to stick to the bare fiberglass, but you want to put the decals on before you apply polyglow for two reasons. One, so that they're um, going to stick to the fiberglass. And number two, you put polyglow over top of the decals. Remember, polyglow has UV inhibitors in it, so it's going to protect the decals from cracking and oxidizing as well. Is there any parts of my boat or RV that I shouldn't use our products on? That's a great question. And actually, there's two, two times when I, I would really think about being careful about using, uh, especially our poly prep. And that's in a, a painted situation where you have parts of the RV that are, are painted and have still a nice clear, uh, clear coat on it. Okay, if it looks great, you know, you want to be careful using that situation. You want to tape that out and protect it with plastic so it doesn't dull the finish there. Now, if the finish is dull, if that clear coat is dull, then you can use poly prep right over it, clean it up, and then poly glue right over top of that. The second situation is a boat that has bottom paint on it or you're planning on putting bottom paint. Bottom paint, as you know, has an anti-fouling effect. It prevents barnacles and slime and weeds and other things from growing on the bottom of the boat. If you have bottom paint on it and you're planning on keeping it on there, you want to, again, protect it with plastic and tape it out so it's sealed because when you prepare the surface of the fiberglass and you're using poly prep, it'll run right over the plastic and won't damage the bottom paint. If you're planning on putting bottom paint on the boat, you want to clean and prepare the whole boat first with poly prep and even poly ox. And then you want to poly glow the parts of the boat only that are going to have polyglow on it. The part of the boat that's going to have bottom paint on it, don't put polyglow on there. It's not recommended to use bottom paint over polyglow. Okay. Does that make sense? It does. Another question though. I have some on the boat, uh, you know, rubber, yep. some plastics, some uh, other materials. How should I treat those with polyglow? Uh, well, that's a great question also. So. Poly prep and poly ox are not going to harm those components. Okay, the rubber oxidizes. You'll see some white streaking on it. Um, plastics oxidize; they get discolored. You know whether the plastics are clear or not clear. Um, but headlights, especially, even get oxidized. You, you see that in, in cars, right? T time out. Yeah. Can I use these products on my headlights? Absolutely. On my car? On your car. Walk me through it. Okay. Well, so let's talk about all these components. Okay. You can use poly prep, poly ox, the scrub pad, and even the ultra fine um, sanding pad on the rubber and the plastics. You can get mold off, you can get you know, some of that discoloration off. You'll see some of those white streaks come off on the rubber, and then you can poly glow them. But headlights specifically, okay, the headlight, that plastic oxidizes on the outside surface. So you put a little poly ox on a, an ultra fine sanding pad, and you, you scrub it, that will become clear as the day you first bought that car. 
and then you hit it with polyglow. It's going to shine, be bright, and it's going to protect it because why? It's got UV inhibitors in it. Now we're talking poly prep. We're talking about prepping my boater RV for polyglow. That's correct. Okay, walk me through how we do this. Okay, so the first thing you're going to use is poly prep and the uh, white scrub pad. Okay, you're going to put on rubber gloves to protect your hands. Our products are environmentally safe, but you still want to protect yourself. You're going to take polyprep, which is a concentrated formula. You're going to mix it one part polyprep to three parts water in a trigger sprayer. You're going to use the non-abrasive scrub pad. You're going to work in sections of about four to six feet in length, right? You don't want to scrub the whole boat. Just work one section at a time. You're going to wet the boat down or the RV with water. You're going to spray polyprep on it with the trigger sprayer, and then you're going to loosen up that oxidation and scrub the surface of the boat. And you'll see it just start to elevate and then you'll rinse it off. Now you may have to do it several times to get it where you want it. Um, if it's a deeper uh, oxidized boat, right? If the boat has uh, much more significant oxidation on it and the colors are really faded, then you want to switch to polyox. So now we're talking polyox. That's right. Tell me the difference we talked about this earlier, but when do I decide to use polyox versus poly prep? Great question. So in a darker colored RV or boat, or if it's been sitting out in the sun for years and you've never done anything with it, the, the oxidation is going to be much more severe. So you can start with poly prep, the white scrub pad. If you still have a lot of oxidation and that color still hasn't come out, switch over to polyox. Remember, put vinyl gloves on. You're going to wet the surface down again. You're actually going to wet the surface of the uh, ultra fine sanding pad. Pour some polyox on it. Just rub it in gently so it doesn't fall uh, onto the ground. And then you're going to just hit the surface with this. This is more aggressive than the white scrub pad, but it's not going to leave scratches. And this should really help get off that heavy oxidation, staining, rust spots, black streaks. You know, even like if there's still wax on it from um, previously applied products. And that should help get off all that heavy oxidation. Lenny, Polyglow is literally sold all over the world. Yep. All different climates, all different temperatures, all different humidity. How do I know when is safe to apply Polyglow with the elements? Uh, that's, that's a great question. So you've got to really think about what's happening outside when you, you know, when you go out there. It's game day. You're ready. You're excited to bring back that shine, that brilliance back to your boat or RV. But... You want to consider what's happening with the wind. If it's blowing around out there, you're going to get dirt and debris that's going to get blown right back up onto the surface of your boat or RV when you're trying to clean and protect it. And plus, if you're applying polyglow and it's windy, dirt and debris is going to get caught and stuck in the polyglow finish. Then you have to start all over by removing those sections. So consider the wind. The next thing you want to consider is whether it's raining outside. Do not do this process when it's raining outside. It's going to prevent the polyglow from going on appropriately. It could leave, you know, water spots onto your polyglow finish. Um, if you do apply polyglow and it does rain overnight, for example, that um, can leave uh, water spots on the surface of the polyglow, which can dry out when it's exposed to the sun and those, those water spots can generally go away, okay? But you want to give the polyglow a chance to cure. You don't want to stick your boat right back into the water and you want to do it when you know it's going to be nicer weather. The third thing you want to think about is temperature and humidity or drying times, right? Like you alluded to, humidity is really important, mm -hmm. right? So things are going to take a lot longer to dry if it's cooler outside or if there's higher humidity. Does that make sense? Yep. Now, if, um, if it's warmer outside and it's really dry, it's going to take less time to dry. So when you clean and prepare the surface of your RV or your boat, you do need to give it time to dry before you apply polyglow. You're going to rinse it all off, right? That's part of the process. You're going to clean and, and prepare. You're going to rinse everything all off. Then you need to let it dry. And that takes about an hour. Longer if it's cooler and more humid. Less time if it's warmer and less humid. Does that make sense? Yes. Polyglow also needs time to dry. Hmm. It needs time to dry in between each coat. So if you apply a coat of polyglow, you want to wait until that tackiness goes away. Again, it usually takes about a minute or two for polyglow to dry. But if it's warmer and less humid, it's going to dry much faster. If it's cooler and 
less humid, it's going to take much longer to dry. So be patient with it. Also, Carmine, remember that you want to apply Polyglow between the temperatures of 60 and 95 degrees. Okay. If it's cooler than that or warmer than that, the re you can get worse results. So just be really careful about the temperature out there. Lenny, I have a very important question for you. All of your questions are important. <laughs> <am I? laughs> we, get, we get phone calls on this a lot. Yep. How many coats of Polyglow should I apply? Yeah. I have some clients that say they apply five coats and it looks amazing. I have others that say they apply 10 coats and it looks amazing. Yep. Can you walk us through how many coats of Polyglow we should apply? Uh, uh, perfect question. I mean, that is super important. So the, the recommended number of coats are anywhere between four and six, but that is in a boat that is less oxidized, right? If you've been taking care of it, you know, your boater RV and it's got, you know, a white ashy layer on it that is, uh, that's thinner, it's not heavily oxidized, the colors aren't completely faded, right? You can get away with four to six coats. And, and in fact, if you wanna put a couple more coats on it, that's better because you're applying more UV inhibitors with each coat, okay? But if you have a boat or RV that's been sitting out in the sun, and especially if you live in like a tropical location or somewhere closer to the equator where the, the sun is intense, your boat or RV is gonna get heavily oxidized. Does that make sense? Yes. And the color is going to be faded and it's just going to look worse. In those situations, I would apply more coats. First of all, the first couple of coats that you apply are going to soak right into the fiberglass. You might not even see the polyglow, right? After you clean and prepare the surface and you start applying polyglow, you might not even see it. It might even look a little streaky. But the more coats you put on, that gloss is just going to pop right out of there. It's just going to come out. And not only that, it may take eight to 10 coats to cover that to really bring out that brilliant shine that we talk about, right? So just remember, if you're in a tropical location, more intense heat, close to the equator, you're gonna need more coats and you may need to apply somewhere around eight months for a reapplication or maintenance coat. So Carmine, we are now at the end of video number four. We've um, taken everybody through, including you and the and Polyglow family, through how to clean and prepare the fiberglass surface, okay? All the oxidation's off. Next video, we're gonna talk about step number two, which is seal and protect. We're gonna restore, we're gonna bring back that shine, we're gonna bring back that unparalleled gloss to your fiberglass surface, and we're gonna show you how to do that in the next video. That was awesome. Yeah.